Hi, I'm E.J. Okafor. I'm a sophomore in the college and I'm majoring in anthropology and human biology. Um, the pres my presentation today is going to be about colonitida, which is um, also known as the colonet. So just a brief overview. Um, it is native to Western African tropics. It is also a mild stimulant. And then it has, in addition to like eating it as normal food, it has medicinal and recreational uses. So about the botanical description, um, the kola nut is, it grows on a type of tree that's in the group of the evergreen tree. Um, it can grow up to 40 to 60 feet tall and 1.5 meters in diameter. It is, um, it is, it normally grows in hot and humid climates um, where there's low elevation and where there's moderate rainfall. Um, as you can see in the picture right over there, as you can see in the picture, the carpels is where the nuts are located in, and it grows along with the flowers, which are either yellowish or green, or it can also be white with like purple lining. Um, the nut is spread by the slave trade, so normally it's found in Western Africa, but now you can find it in places such as Brazil or in the southern parts of Africa, like Zimbabwe. So traditional uses. Um, in the 12th century, it was found by an Arabian medicine, um, an Arabian trader named, I don't know how to pronounce it very well, but El Gofsky. He found out that it relieved um, stomach aches, it possesses warming properties. And then also in the Muslim, it's used as a masticatory product um, that's not condemned by Islam. Normally, it, normally like no other stimulant is allowed. So this is the only one that they're allowed to use. Um, also, traders who are traveling long distances, like for the slave trade, they would eat it and it would help reduce fatigue, hunger, and thirst. Also, they found out like it made them more aware when they were traveling. Um, other things that it has helped, it also helps male sexual impotency. Um, it also helps headaches. And then it's a diuretic. Um, some ethnobotanical uses is that it is a mild stimulant. It's used recreationally, like the sharing of tobacco. It can either be used individually or in groups. Um, it has a bitter taste when you first eat it, but then it has a sweeter taste after. So it was used as a sweetener, like if, it, if you ate something bad, or you could use it as a sweetener. Um, in the original Coca-Cola, it was also used in addition to um, coca. And, and then also in African societies, it's used for special occasions like weddings or just parties, like you'd bring it as a gift. Also for dowries, like for if you want to get married. And then you could say a red one was no, and then if you gave him a white cola back, it would mean yes, that you would want to get married to him. So, so the main constituents is caffeine and therabrine. Um, they affect the central nervous system and the skeletal muscles. So caffeine is responsible for the main um, stimulation of the central nervous system, while the therobromine affects the skeletal muscles. Um, as you can see, that's the, um, yeah, for caffeine and then therobromine. So um, the caffeine content is actually really high. Um, in addition, in comparison to coffee, it has three times the amount of caffeine, so it's really, really powerful. And then another active constituent is choline, which helps like the heart stimulant. So biological studies. Um, it was known as a bronchiodilator. It helps. Um, it blocks an inhibitor, so it allows to help um, people with like asthma. It could help them also. It's used as a diuretic, so like dropsy. It could also help that, like it helps water retaining. Um, it was known as an anti-tumor, and then it's said to have weight loss, but the issue with that is that um, it actually puts weight in your organs, and so that was one problem with that. And then another thing was that it was sort of found that it could help herpes, but it's not necessarily like, it hasn't fully been tested, so they're still looking over that. So the only clinical study that I found was the cardiac effects um, on a person. It increases the metabolic rate 
it seemed to increase as you ate more colon up because of the caffeine. And then also the rhythmic heart activity, the more colon up that you ate, the higher the, um, the heart would beat. So that was a problem. And there's more studies that they're trying to find out, like if it has any other effects. But that's it for so far. Okay, so some contradictions. Um, one study I found that malaria, it actually, um, the caffeine actually inhibits the camp in our body, so then it allows the parasites to multiply faster. So those who ate colon up in, um, in a malaria infested like area would have um, the higher probability of getting malaria. Also, um, it contains hydrocyanic acid so short term, it would cause like nervous respiratory system and cardiovascular system to break down. Also, if you used it in long term, it would cause headaches, dizziness, um, damages to the nervous system. And then of course, like the side effects of caffeine, if you take too much, you can get diz dizzy, there's nausea. Um, also, it was also to affect the GI tract. So it said that um, it causes gastric secretion, so that could also cause, ulc that could cause ulcers in the GI tract. So, Current uses. It was reintroduced as a flavoring for drinks. Um, it's found in, this was, came out I think in 2009. It was like a Pepsi redone, so they added some colona in it. Also, it can be used to make teas. You pound, the, you pound up the seeds and then you boil it and then you can use it for tea. Um, it was also FDA approved, the extract. So it's available in capsules and you can tape it for like herbal doses. So. The conclusion. Um, so the colonna is centuries old. It's been around for a long time. Even before we found its medicinal uses, um, it was just used as an everyday thing. They knew the stimulants, so they would use it every day or just for special occasion or like religious customs. Um, it's a valued commodity for, um, for several African countries. Um, they make a lot of profit off of it. Also, the medicinal and recreational uses is very important. And then it's a powerful stimulant that counteracts fatigue, thirst, and then hunger. So any questions?